I'm speaking to you just from a certain scripture. Hopefully I get it right this time. Can we talk from Matthew? It's not Mark, but it's Matthew. Matthew 12, from verse 18. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen. The one I love in whom I delight. Hallelujah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen. The one I love in whom I delight. Who's speaking? It's the father speaking. Father God is speaking about his son. And father is saying, here is my servant. You know, the father is God. Jesus is God. Holy Spirit is God. The triune God. All three, they are God. But for the mandate that is in the heart of God. For God that had a desire that mankind will call him father. And that they will be his children. That the nations will be his home. When Father, Son, Holy Spirit said, we want more than what we have now. We want more than heaven. And the more that they wanted than heaven all around them was you and me. And they said, heaven will not be our home. But the people will be our home. The nations will be our home. And that will be the new Jerusalem on Mount Zion, the place where God alone will be honored. So it will be forever. But we have the privilege to be part of God's dream. And even sometimes you can feel some things are like a nightmare, some relationships like a nightmare or a horror movie <clears throat> for certain things that we could go through. Still there's a God that says, I know, I know the thoughts that I have about you. And you can have hope because of his thoughts about you. That's what God is thinking about you. And that is how you must come to know your father's heart. Because of his thoughts about you. Thoughts not to harm you, but the thoughts that is plans, that is translated into plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Hey, amen. And out of that dream, out of that dream, God the Father said, I will appoint Jesus Christ as the servant. The servant. Ooh, the servant. He positioned himself as a servant. Therefore, God gave him the name above all names, Jesus Christ, because he was willing to put himself as a servant. But humility is the beauty in the Trinity. Humility is the beauty in the Trinity. Hello? Humility that the Father said, the name Father will not be the name above all names, but the name Jesus will be the name above all names. Jesus had said, I will do nothing unless I see my father doing it. I will not say anything I see unless I see my father saying it. Holy Spirit that says in humility, I will not speak for myself. I will only speak the words of Jesus. Remind you of his words and explain his words to you. That's humility as a beauty in the Trinity. And so humility is not just an attitude in your life. Humility is not just a principle to get something. When you humble yourself, he will lift you up. It's not just a strategy. It's not just a strategy. It's part of his character established in you. Part of his character established in you. And that humility will protect you, protect you. When God wants to put you out there. When he wants to brag about his child. Brag about what he created. 
So when you live accurately, when I stand up, when you stand up in the name of Jesus Christ, when you are faithful and two talents become four, five become ten, it's because God wants to brag about what he can do. Now you go and live according to his agenda, his motives. May your motive be the same as his motive. And for that we have the grace of God. For that we have the blood of Christ so that more tomorrow will be a new opportunity so that it can happen. And because of the grace, because of the cross, because of the blood, we have hope that tomorrow can be a better tomorrow. If yesterday you messed up through the cross, you have hope. Here is my servant. Father, want to present Jesus Christ to you. Here is my servant. Where? 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 Is Jesus Christ. Father is saying to you, here he is. Look into the word, the living word, Jesus Christ. Here is my servant. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Don't ask me. Ask the Father in my name. So don't focus just on me. Focus on the Father in my, in my name. Hello. You are with me. Hallelujah. Here is my servant. And then my brother, my sister. If Jesus Christ is presenting himself as a servant through the Father, by the Father. If you are in Christ, Christ in you. The servant is in you. The servant of creation. The servant of everything. The servant as the essence and the heart of the heaven is in you. If you are in Christ, you are in the servant. But the enemy will come and the whole facet of servanthood, well, he, he put a disgrace, he put a shame on it, he put it as a slavery, a, a curse and a yoke of slavery on you. That's only when you are a servant of the rubbish from hell, a servant of your flesh, because that is unto destruction, because that is a curse. I do what I do because I must do it. Okay. You choose to be a slave under the enemy. So the destruction will work in you. So that the curse will work in you and through you. Oh, I must just do this and they expect me to do this. And I must just do this and they expect me to do this. And now I even speak to David, you know. They expect me to do this. And I, and I curse him. And I curse him. With how I stand on my right and my wrong. But what they expect of me and what they don't expect of me. And how I must do this. And, and I put a poison in him. But I'm actually cursing him. To come under the curse of slavery. You're going to be a slave. You like it or not. I'm going to be a slave. I like it or not. But it's your choice. You have a free choice. If you will be under the enemy. Under your flesh. Under your selfish pride or under Jesus Christ as a privilege. Because under him it's because of a relationship. It's because of, because of a love. It's based on something that is eternal. From a place of humility I serve. Practical humility I want to say is servanthood. You can write that down. Practical humility is servanthood. Practical humility is servanthood. Humility will protect you as a servant so that you don't try to rise up. What happened? Lucifer, you're a servant. You are the most beautiful angel in heaven, according to the prophets. And this most beautiful angel in heaven thought, I also have a say in this. I also have a say in this. And that made him the center of hell. When he walked out of the protection of humility, out of that place, into a place. But I also have a say in this. Oh, so must I just do whatever people are telling me? No, nobody said that. But when you're in a place, and God has called you into the place, either you're working at the OK, or the checkers, or the pick and pay, or the what, 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 you will better obey the boss. Why? Because he's right. No. 
He's not always right, but because God has called you to be there, and your life will be a testimony that you do that as if unto the Lord. But just always arguing with the boss, or arguing in your heart with the boss, you are arguing with God. You're not arguing with the boss, because God has placed you there unless you believe the devil put you there. But if you believe that the devil didn't put you in pick and pay, but God, then you do it because God placed you there. And because you are a servant of the Most High. But not a servant. If I fight against servanthood, why will I fight against Jesus? Because Jesus is the servant of all. Jesus is the Father's servant, appointed by the Father to be the servant. And you are living in the servant with a life hidden in Christ. Your life is hidden in the servant of the Father. Are you with me? I'm fighting today against children. Hey, but I'm not sure they're just confirming. If you cannot say amen, they will say it in their own way. <laughs> okay. Huh. God will help us. Are you with me? Oh, please, my brother, please understand this. And more and more and more and more and more and more in the end time, the church will rise up as a servant. The protection when hell will expose himself as the boss of this world, the God of this world is the enemy, the devil. And when the devil explains to everybody, I'm boss in this place. You know what? Humility will protect you against what hell can offer you. Whatever hell's going to expose for the seven years of this tribulation and the antichrist and that. How many antichrists already came? Jesus said, oh, what is the one that stands against Christ? What does the word antichrist mean? But in the last days, the fullness of those who stand against Christ will be exposed and they will rule. They will say, I'm in control. And I stand against Christ. Anti-Christ. But I can flirt with the Antichrist. What is Antichrist in me? My flesh is anti-Christ in me. It's against. Anti means against. My flesh is against Christ. Now I can flirt with that what is against Christ. In me. Then one day I will be intimidated by whatever more the Antichrist is there. And I will not, but it will not be so for our lives in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen? Where is your protection? I present to you, the Father says, I've presented to you and I'm presenting to you my servant. Not, first of all, your servant. My servant. And what Jesus will do is for my glory. So even if my servant, even God himself, will ask, please, Father, may this cup be removed from me. The Father said, no. And we don't always understand why God would say, no, we don't like a no. Hello. Okay, only me, maybe. And we don't understand what's happening out there in the world many times. And we think God didn't answer. But Jesus didn't think the Father didn't answer him. He answered him. Even though the scripture doesn't say, and the Father said no. Did the Father ignore him? No, the Father also didn't ignore him. But he stood up there and he knew. I will have to go through this. And to do your will. That is my food, Jesus said. My food is to do the will of my Father. He stood up out of Gethsemane with the food from the Father. Oh man, come on. Come on. And he had to go through the anguish of whatever hell you can say in that sense. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. What if you understand the Father and the Son and you are found in the Son 
and you start to see what is the life that is hidden in him. There's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful life that God has for you. But it is found through the servant in you or you in the servant. Or you in the servant. Then what? On, on, that, on that, God says, I love, I love the genuine you. But he first says, first of all, Father is loving the Son in whom he has delight. Hello. Where is God's love as a father for you? Where will you find the father's love for you? In Christ. Because the father loves the son. And when you are in the son, and the son in you, in me loves, in me lives the one that the father loves. Because the father loves the son. In John it says it 300 times. There's a lot of dynamic about the father and the son that is explained in the book of John. The apostle of love. A lot of that dynamic in the Trinity about love. So if God would say, let me just jump there. God would say greatest commandment, love the Lord your God and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Why you better love yourself? Because you are in Christ, Christ in you. God loves himself. God loves himself. Because the father loves the son, the son loves the father. Hello? So the whole dynamic in the Trinity, the passion living in the Trinity and among the Trinity, in the Trinity and among the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, is love. So if you want to be ambassador of Christ, you need to understand how to love yourself as the Father loves himself. But you love what he has placed in you. You love the genuine you that is found in the servant. The servant living in you and you living in the servant. Whom the father loves and he delights in him. That delight is, is beautiful. The God, God is smiling. He's loving but he's also smiling. He's enjoying. He finds satisfaction in you. That is delight. Come into that place so that you can know what is the Father's thoughts about you. There, in that place, I will put my spirit on him. He will proclaim justice to the nations. In that place, when you understand the Father and the Son and you in the Son, Holy Spirit will be upon you. That's God's hand. Holy Spirit is in you when you gave your life to Christ. Your spirit was reborn. Holy Spirit testify in your spirit. Fullness of God is in your spirit. But the Holy Spirit over you is the dynamic when you understand that the Father has called you in the Son. Father, as you have called me, John 17, so I've called them. As you have sent me, so I send them. Then Isaiah says, the Spirit of the Lord God is on me because he has anointed me, because he has a purpose. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. That's the hand of the Father is upon him. Uh, there's a lot of things. Hey, I'm tempted. But the Father is in the Son. Son is in the Father. There's a lot of dynamics. Sometimes we must do it. But I think we must do it separate from our Sunday maybe. But God is the triune God. But with a mission. With a mission. God... The Father said to God the Son, I have appointed you, I have chosen you to position yourself as a servant towards me. Jesus said, no problem, because humility is the beauty, is a beauty in the Trinity. Are you with me? And I've commissioned you for a purpose on earth for the nations to become our home and in that purpose for that commissioning the spirit the third one in the trinity will be over you 
so that you will be able to fulfill the purpose. But if I serve, and then he says, mm, I must serve, and I must do this, and I must do this. this is unfair, that is not fair, this is right, this is wrong. This is, it's okay, but you're under the curse of slavery. And the first foundation for the New Testament church, Hebrews 6, is repentance from dead works. What is that? It's the works that God didn't plan for you. Yes, but what is the dead works? The first repentance is when I do something without the Spirit of God on me. Because the first thing that happened to you is when the Spirit of God came in you and brought the rebirth that you could become the, a child of God. And now the Spirit has touched you that who you are out of darkness into His marvelous light, not going to burn in hell forever, but going to the Father forever. What the Spirit has done, He says, the first thing now is, whatever you do, you do it with the Spirit. Repent from doing things without the Spirit. Because anything without the Spirit is dead works. Hebrews 6. I remember that. We talked about that five Sundays. Okay. Are you with me? Please, don't go and dance this week. Don't go and act. Don't go and do it for the guys with the Hope in the House production. If you don't ask the Spirit to be upon you, ask for the hand of the Father on you when you do the mime, when you do the acting, when you sing. You pray that for the choirs. There is not... 200 people singing, whoa, but 140 are singing dead works. Because the hand of the Father is not over them. Oh man, uh -uh. we don't want that. Are you with me? Are you with me? Please. I put my spirit on him and he. If my spirit is on him, he will. If God's spirit is on you, you will proclaim justice. What does that mean? You sent them to hell and you sent them to heaven. Now proclaim justice. You will bring the authority of God in a situation. That doesn't mean everything will now be fair around you. No, it will look, sometimes look even so much more, so much more, so much more unfair. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm still speaking. Praise God. Okay. Okay. So what are we saying? What are we saying? Oh, what are we saying? <laughs> okay, allow the anointing of God on you. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me to do. The Spirit of the Lord God is not upon Jesus, just so that the Spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon Jesus for a purpose. Because He has anointed me, because the Father has put His hand on me to proclaim the message to bring healing to set free to do this to do this to do to do to do to do say to do now you have a many a many a lot of things to do but you better do nothing without the spirit do it without the spirit your foundation foundation is cracked your foundation is not built you can have a most excellent palace never mind small kamakazi house palace but if it's built on sand it's gonna fall the bigger the palace the more destruction in your destiny the bigger thing you built with your life on sand the greater the destruction for you or your children or their children you're setting yourself or your children up for destruction uh-uh uh -uh. So, part of foundation, I will not do anything without you, Holy Spirit. John 15, 5, somewhere there, I think. I can do nothing. I can do nothing without you. That was a choice. That's not, there's a lot of guys out there in the world that can curse God. They're not doing it with God to curse Him. But you make a decision. I will do nothing without him. I will do nothing without him. Please, my brother, my sister, that is how the way that the Father sent the Son, and you are sent in the Son. The Son in you is sent. You are in the Son that is sent. 
and that is the servant. That is the servant. Are you with me? Hello? Okay. So you will have impact to the nations. Next one. Let's go. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. What are we talking about? Jesus Christ, the servant. You in the servant, the servant in you. But there will not be this fight with someone. There will not be this fight with your flesh. There will not be this quarreling the whole time. But if I have a quarreling with somebody, or with myself, or with this, then this issue, and then there's that issue, and then... Understand that you don't know the servant in you. And you don't know yourself in the servant. When I go into the fairness and unfairness, are you sure you know the servant in you and you in the servant? Because your servant, the servant will not curse you. Jesus Christ will not curse you. No one will hear his voice in the streets. You will not throw a tantrum. There will not be a tantrum in here. In the street, there will be a man of humility to do the will of the Father. There will be servant that will do it without arguing, without quarreling, without talking back, if I must say it like that. That will just do, it's an honor to do, and I do. It's an honor to do, and I do. There will not be a noise in the street. There will be a lifestyle that will speak. The voice will be your lifestyle. The voice, let's say, my voice will be my lifestyle. And through the grace of God, only through the grace of God, it can be accurate. But there will not be this noise and tantrum in the street. Right, next one. A bruised reed, he will not break. And a smoldering wick, he will not snuff out. Bogle. Till he brought justice through to victory. All right. Bruised reed. My brother, my sister, in that sense, the bruised reed that is broken, it's, if you have five brain cells, the farmer know that it cannot be used. It will not bear fruit. So logic says it's impossible. And maybe your logic could say today that there will not be a harvest through my life. There will not be a 30, 60, 100 fold harvest through my life. It cannot work. And in a lot of ways you can feel there's a lot of stuff that cannot work. Well, God come and he does the miracle. With man what is impossible, with God it is possible. Amen. So the bruised reed, if you feel like that in your emotions, in some relationships, in something about the future, in with discouragement or with... I don't know, whatever, negativity or whatever. If you feel, I never, I don't get victory over this rubbish. If I find myself, then I have an issue again. If I find myself, I mean this last thing again. If I find myself, I'm depressed again. If I find myself, I don't get this bruised, bruised. But you know, he was bruised for our iniquities. Hello. And if you believe more in the bruisedness of what he did on the cross, than what you experience as the reality of a bruised reed in your emotions, or in relationships, or in things that are happening around you, honor him that he was bruised for your iniquities. Honor the truth above the facts. Fact, bruised reed. You've experienced that in your life. But truth, he was bruised for your iniquities. That iniquities is, he was bruised for that what was your fault. What is my fault and your fault? For that, he was bruised. And if you walk with a thankfulness and a humility, when you ex realize his grace, then I will not point the finger to one another. That is that guy's fault that I'm bruised. That guy's, that one's fault that I'm a bruised reed. Now this smoldering wick, give me a different English word for that one. You know what that is, it's a lamp. And where the lamp 
the fire is not really going, there's just smoke, smoke. But you know, where there's still smoke, there's something still happening. There's still something happening. You know, when there was a fire here, and there's smoke with this wooden logs, then you must still be careful, you must watch it. Because with wind, with wind, with wind, if it's dry, it's going to cause a fire. You with me? So, when there's a cloudiness that you feel in your, when the, it's a lamp that's supposed to shine and bring light. Now, there's not a fire in the lamp that brings light. There's a, a smoke and you don't see what God is doing. You don't experience, you experience the smoke that can even bring a problem in your, how you will breathe. Hello? What, what is for smore? Like suffocating the, the breath in you and circumstances and things in you and your flesh and, and the, the, the arguing, the, the, the stuff in your heart with people and yourself can smother you that you not, cannot really breathe. The peace of God, <sighs> above all understanding to breathe. And God wants to set you free. God wants to set you free. But respect the servant in you and understand who you are in the servant, appointed by the Father. And then, what will happen? He will brought justice through to victory. He will have the final say and if you, God, you allow God to have the final say, justice, you will have victory. If you allow God to bring justice, that means not who's right and who's wrong. Justice like is the authority of God in his will. This is his will. You go with his will. You submit to his will in humility. You are a servant to his will. You do that. You will see a breakthrough. You will see victory. Amen. Last one. In his name, the nations will put their hope. In his name, the nations will put their hope. My brother, my sister, you find a Daniel and you find the kings. And the kings were not all servants of the Lord. Not one of them. They were not children of God. They were not following God. All these knoll kings, if I must say like that. I mean, they are asking all the Hwara Mampara uh, uh, counselors to give them answers that they must bring forth answers through all the demons that they can have access to as mediums. Hello? And they don't have answers. Okay, and here comes a guy, Daniel. And this king, and the next king, and the next king. He served under four kings as a servant. He, he didn't fight the king, but he served with integrity. But what he brought forth brought such a respect from this heathen king that he said, if you speak against that lady's king, if you speak against his God, you will be killed. You speak against that man's God, you, we're going to kill you. He's not loving his God. He's not serving with a passion and worshiping Daniel's God. But he said, I can trust her God. I can trust his God. Are, are you with me? That doesn't mean I have a relationship with his God. But I, I have a hope because of the God of, of Joseph, says Pharaoh. I have hope, says the four kings in Daniel, because of what? Because of the God of Daniel. Because of the God of of the church, the nation can find hope. There's hope for the city because there's a church who's serving their God radically with faith and faithfulness. And therefore, Bluefontein, all the nations, says, we have hope because the God of the Christians is keeping us alive, is giving us wisdom. Are you with me? So hope will be established in the nations if they believe in God or not, but they will have a respect for the God of the church. Like that guy had such a respect and said, you speak something against his God, we kill you. Where do you find that? No, man. The swear word is Jesus. Hello? 
and uh, you watch a movie and uh, not even rate it. You call it PG. It's not your pajamas. Oh no, that's PJ, hey. <laughs> I don't know. But PG. Better use the name of Jesus because he's not a swear word. Come on. Like we said here before. More and more and more and more and more and more. With the Antichrist, what is against Christ is you allowed to use the name of Jesus as a swear word. You can use the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ. You can use it as a swear word. Everything will be fine. But uh, don't you dare use that name with respect in the school. Then you're forcing your religion on somebody else. And then you're in trouble. You use that name with respect. In a school or a place. In many countries. You're in trouble. You use it as a swear word. It's okay. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. May God help you that the people around you know you have respect above all else. You have respect for Jesus Christ. And you don't fear the boss. No. You are only having respect for the boss and do what the boss says because you have the respect and the fear of God for your God, for your master. And he said, what you do under that boss, you do as if unto the Lord. As if unto the Lord. If you're unfairly, 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 unfairly treated for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, unfairly being lied about, all of that, all of that, all of that, all of that. All of that. And the next moment, you're standing before the king. You open your mouth and the whole economy of a whole heathen nation change so that they can be a servant for the children of God. Who are you, Joseph? Joseph. You have a thousand times, you have the opportunity to take offense, to be hurt by all the people closest to you, by the ones you serve faithfully, and fairness with that lady that said, oh, this man did this, and this man did that. There you're in jail, and you are faithful, you are declaring the dreams, and the one guy that is out that declared the dream, you're going to die, sorry. You're going to go to the king's palace, but rem remind him about me. He went there, got his position back, based on a dream from this, from this man, Joseph, and he uh, forgot about Joseph. Until two years later, when the king had a dream. But you know, Joseph were in the hands of God, not in the hands of the king. Are you with me? Hello? You're still here? May God help you. In his name, the nations were put they hope. Hope in every house. Doesn't it? The hope in every house. Hope Jesus Christ is our eternal hope. But for the guys that don't serve him, they will acknowledge. I have hope in his God. Because all the guys, the rest, they talked rubbish. They couldn't explain the dream to me. But I have faith and I have hope in the God of Daniel. Because he had the wisdom. When he opened his mouth, he declared that what was right. That what was justice. I bless you with that. I pray that God will help you. And that we pray that for the church. That we will get in such a place. That the more that the world wants to just... I want to say vomit everything from hell upon the nations. That there will be a thing of, we cannot find something against those guys. We cannot find something against those guys. You know how they, uh, they threw the Christians in the, in, the, is it in the Colosseum for the lions. They throw the Christians for the lions. And that was freaky, eh? That was their horror movies those days. And then they sit there. Now we have it in our living room. Not me, you guys. No, also not you. And so they sat there and they, it's this major thing to see how they, they run and how those lions tore them into pieces and eat them up. That was their sport. But then the Christians did what? They came together in a circle in the middle, standing with one another, praying and worshiping God. So later they didn't do it anymore because there's no fun in it. 
because there's no one running around, there's no one, no one trying to fight the lion. <laughs> it was boring. You get the lions out and there's a Christian singing a worship song. Until from behind these lions come and start to devour them. Sure, because they are not from this world. They were in this world, but not from this world. You don't go and fight those lions so that you can be a mockery to the world, so that you can be the, a movie for them to enjoy. They eat sitting there eating their popcorn, looking at your life. They and the demons. Demons looking at you. They have a looking at the comedy of how you can deal with whatever. They are the enemy, but you will fight somebody in the flesh. You will fight that guy, you will fight that one, I fight that one, there you in the flesh. They, they are eating their popcorn, they don't have to do anything. You will do the work for them. And how you can fight or hurt or disappoint or this or break down somebody else with words, with actions, with... Ah, no, it's going to change in Jesus' name. Amen. Ha uh ah, -uh, not anymore. Not anymore. So my brother and my sister, I want to end with that. I want to leave it there. But I pray that you will have respect for these servants and that you will worship the servant. He's the King of Kings and He's the Lord of Lords, but in the same way, He's the servant. He's the servant. He's not servant the curse and then as a trick because He was humble enough, now He's the King of Kings. I worship Him as the one that has the Biggest authority. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He has the final authority. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But I admire and I worship the beauty of humility in the same King of Kings that has the heart of a servant. Even though he has the title of King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the heart of the servant. The line of Judah is also the Lamb of God. The line of Judah. He turned. He heard the line of Judah. They said, they screamed it out in heaven. Behold the line. And when he turned, when they said the line of Judah, he says there four verses further in Revelation. He looked and he saw the lamb. He heard the lion. And when he really looked, turned around, he saw the lamb. You respect the authority of the lion of Judah. Respect the authority from this word. And you just decide, as a servant, I will just do. See, there's an honor. That's it. You respect the lion of Judah. You will see the lamb. Thank you, my father. God, help us to understand the authority through the lion of Judah. So that we can come into the place of intimacy with the lamb. Worthy is the lamb. But God, I pray for every man and woman in this place that you will set us free to understand servanthood as the beauty, quality, quality of beauty in the Trinity. And that we will be ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors of who you are. And that we have the honor to display your humility as a protection against pride that brought the destruction of a third of heaven's angels. I pray for that protection of every man and woman in this place, that humility will protect them. Protect them in their choices. Protect them in that, that there will not be this fight, this quarreling. We speak silence to that quarreling and that arguing in the heart in the name of Jesus Christ. They will not be, we will not be slaves under the curse from hell for destruction. We are not destined for destruction. Lord, by your grace, by your mercy, through your blood, in the name of Jesus, and with the hand of the Father, through the Holy Spirit on our lives. God, thank you for the honor and the privilege that we can be servants, that we can be like you. Like you. And the servants then see the awesome final authority coming through our lives because of who you are. Help us to roar like the line of Judah through the word of God. So that we can have intimacy also through the word as vocabulary in our intimate relationship with you. Father, Son, as the Holy Spirit opens it up. 
We thank you for that. I pray that for every man, woman in this place. In Jesus' name, as all say, Amen. Amen.